Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about our single arm outside swing, a non-standard movement with a kettlebell and a standard movement with a heavy club. The outside swing is not something that's normally done with kettlebells. Normally kettlebells swing between the legs, thumb swings back, thumb comes up, transition. That's the way kettlebells have been done. That's the way I learned them. That's the way many people do them. You can do them with an outside swing. And we're going to do that because it's going to link into a juggling series of videos later. But we're going to talk about it with a club first, because that's how I originally learned it. And then we're going to talk about it with a kettlebell. When you swing outside, your foot position changes. Your foot position normally with kettlebells is, as I like to teach it, is shoulder width apart with two feet pointed straight ahead because that's the way we walk. Clubs are the same thing. We would like to avoid turnout because when we're doing double clubs, having your knees and your feet turned out just makes targets to hit. It's the same way when you ride a dirt bike off road, you don't have your feet sticking out on the pedals because they catch on bushes and it rips you off the dirt bike and you hilariously fall down. The same thing is true when you're riding horses. You point your feet straight ahead, you put your toes in the stirrups and you drive your heels down. Same reason, so you don't get ripped off the horse. Pointing your feet straight ahead is a very, very human thing that we should probably do, and we're gonna do it here as well. With our stance with this, we are going to be shoulder width or slightly closer together. The wider the object you're swinging, the closer your feet are together. You can do this with your feet all the way together if it's freaking you out or if your knees are deviating in weird ways. If your feet are pointed straight together and your knees are collapsing at the bottom of the swing, just move your feet all the way together and don't give your knees anywhere to go. So we are going to point our feet straight ahead and we are gonna have them a little bit close for most people's level of comfort. A lot of athletic stuff is very, very wide. I want you to think about this like a skiing position and the bottom position here to be like the bottom of a downhill skiing position. We point our feet straight ahead because we don't want things sticking out that we're gonna rip off. We are going to give it the old judo chop into the hip and we are gonna put our weight in our heels. If our heels lift off the ground, we're not in our heels. We are using the front of our leg instead of the big muscles in the back of our leg. So at the bottom of this movement, we should be deep down in our heels and our toes should be very, very light. When we stand up, we should stand up through our heels and we do not want to shift our weight into our toes. We're going to reach out, grab our club, roll, fire our lat. Our thumb is going to point up, wrap your thumb all the way around it. And we are going to push the weight back, stand all the way up. In this movement, we're trying to keep our shoulders square. The club wants to pull us into one side extension. And you can do that, and there are moves that do that. Uppercut swing with a kettlebell does that. For the most part, with this exercise, we're trying to keep our body square, and we are resisting the yawing rotation of our spine and engaging our core in order to do that. So let's resist this rotation for now with this version of the exercise. Keep our shoulder straight ahead, drive our shoulder blade back and down, connect your lat. Your lat should stay on the entire time. We do not want our shoulder to deviate beyond the line of our body. Shoulder, elbow, hip bone, all in one line. When we stand up, we don't want to rotate out and forward on this exercise. For now, we are staying steady and we are resisting rotation at the top and at the bottom. This is a very abby exercise because of all of the resisting of rotation. You do 50 swings, you will have done 50 core stability exercises. Do 50 on each side, now you've done 100. The math on kettlebells and clubs always works out to have a lot of internal core stability. Now let's demonstrate this with a kettlebell. So the kettlebell, as you can tell, is much, much wider than even a wide club is. Therefore, when you start this movement, you're gonna wanna make sure you don't clip yourself in the shin because it becomes a real possibility with wide, wide kettlebells like competition kettlebells. If you have to make your feet a little bit thinner to make yourself feel comfortable, totally fine to do. With our kettlebell, same thing is true. We're gonna reach out 
fire our lat to connect it to our body, our thumb is going to be pointed up the entire time. Even when we're at the bottom, our thumb is still pointed up relative to our shoulder. We are not going to turn it and roll our shoulder out of the socket. We're going to keep our thumb in this closed shoulder position, neutral position, so we can keep the lat on the entire time. Grab, pack the shoulder. This movement has two different types of grip with the two different apparatus. The club pulls through our grip, so we have our OK ice cream cone grip. This one is dominated by that ice cream cone grip the entire time. The club is always pulling through our hand, and our grip is dominated by the lowest portion of our hand here. The kettlebell pulls against your grip, so it's gonna be dominated by the OK grip, it's just that bigger kettlebell OK grip where you use those first two fingers the most and wrap your thumb around them. A heavy club to do this with is, you know, 25 to 45 pounds. Above that, it gets to be a lot to hold. If you could get your hands on heavier clubs, do it. Same thing with kettlebells. I like to use this as a time under tension exercise. 60 seconds of swings on one side, 60 seconds of swings on the other side but you could plug this into any of your old swing formats. 10 swings inside of a minute on each side and start adding up to 20 swings on each side and use all the weights you have. The great thing about kettlebells is if you can't think of something to do, there's always an option. Swing between the legs, swing outside the legs. Simple. So you could run all of your swing training programming over again doing an outside swing and balancing swings on the right side and swings on the left side of your body to get another training effect, which will only make you more athletic over time. The more angles you train, the more athletic you are over time. In review, shoulder pack, fire the lat. The lat should stay on the entire time. At the bottom of the movement, be in your heels. As you stand up, power through, your glutes should be squeezed at the top of the movement. We do not want to have our rib cage lifted. Drive your rib cage down so your abs can be on so you can breathe behind the shield. Crown to coccyx alignment at both the bottom and at the top of the movement. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica.